Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order, please. All right, our first um, agenda item is to approve the minutes from our last two meetings, January 17th. Did you have anything? I have nothing. No, yeah, sir. I'll make a motion to approve the January 17th meeting Second. minutes as presented. Second that motion. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. We also have non-public from the 17th. I will make a motion to approve the non-public meeting minutes of the 17th as presented. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll also make a motion to approve the January 24th meeting minutes as presented. Second the motion. That's yours. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the January 24th non-public meeting minutes as presented. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Jane. And Karina, I hope you did one of them. Yeah. I do. Thank you. The um the meeting on the twenty fourth was a um site visit. Site visit and a, a non typical meeting. It wasn't on a Monday night. It was Tuesday, I think, in the noon time. Um, and and just to to bring people up to date because there weren't any, well, there weren't many public at the at the meeting. Um. We announced at our last elections meeting that we had a um, we have a conflict with putting the skate park at the Riverfront Park. Um, they, the the um, uh, testing of that they came back to us in 2017 after doing a bunch of environmental testing on the site and came back and said that that basically it didn't look too bad, but we needed to do more testing. And, and we're about almost five years later. And um, in going through DES um, and, and Brownsfield money and further the further testing they required, um, we came back with an uh, they came back with an estimate to us of cleaning up the the little that was left at about eight hundred thousand dollars, which put a big wrench into the works of putting the skateboard park there on a on a short term or, I mean on a quick basis. Um, so, so our goal last Tuesday was to look at two other sites to put the skateboard park in. One was well. Let's note too that the some of the grant monies that the skate park committee has received are time sensitive, so we don't have the time to wait for the cleanup, or they'll lose a lot of money. Right, so and and the other side of that is we could get Brownsfield money to do the cleanup, which we got for the assessment. <laughs> We could get it for the cleanup, but not in a time frame that makes sense to putting a skateboard park there. They would lose two hundred something. Yeah, no, like eighty something, eighty seven thousand yeah. dollars. Not for the change. grant part of it. Right. right. Um, anyway, uh, we looked at two different alternative sites for that. One was a community building. One was the Kank Rec area. Um, and while there were numerous problems and issues pros and cons. Re pros related to the Kank Rec area, um, everyone agreed that the community center would be the, the better site to put that. So as a follow-up to that meeting, um, I brought the issue up at the planning board meeting last week. And um, the, the planning board, number one, needs to be informed if we do anything on town land like that. We, we're not required by law to go before um, uh, site plan review, but we weren't going to go in there with I just to say no, we're not going to do it. Right. It's just what what does the planning board want us to do? And they were happy with us um, having the review process take place at the board of selectmen forum, um, but wanted us to do at least two public meetings where it was on the agenda and that we uh, uh, notified all of butters to that site by U.S. mail. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to schedule two meetings, uh, our two meetings that are scheduled in February. We're going to put that on 13th the, and the 27th. 13th and the 27th. Thank you. We're going to put that on the agenda to listen to, to people's response of, of locating the um, skateboard park at the community center as you're facing it from Pollard Road towards the left hand side, not right up against the, um, okay. the property line leaving a buffer of trees that exist there now, putting the skateboard park 
um, a little bit back from where the paved parking is uh, to the left of the gazebo, to the right of the trees in that in that area. So if you have any thoughts on that, positive, negative, any questions on that, um, either of the two meetings in February, we'll have that on the agenda. So wanted to put that there. So the next thing, Thank you for that. next thing on the agenda is a, a discussion regarding the, the, the Kank rec area. Um, uh, a little bit ago, I don't know, oh, a couple of weeks, I guess, we got a letter from um, Vicki Martin about some suggested changes uh, at the Kank rec area. I know there was a, a Facebook post. I just want you to know that the Suckman haven't had any discussion about doing anything drastic with the Kank that would in, you know, interrupt its, uh, its, its operation or, or um, uh, changing it in any way to, to restrict or make major changes. I'll read you the um, topics that were covered in the original letter. And then um, we can open this up for discussion. So these are the topics that the selectmen were made aware of and wanted to um, discuss, resolve, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so her letter, again, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but it, it says, I ask you to return the tank to the beloved and welcoming space that it had always been. I have outlined specifics as follows. Number one, please remove the ski up candy window. And the letter goes on to explain some of the reasons behind that. Please put the tables back in the building, open the upstairs, bring the couches and comfortable, or bring back the couches and comfortable chairs and return the hours to 10 to four on Saturday and Sunday. So these, these are the, the five issues that um, we were asked to look at and address. Um, I'm gonna uh, certainly give the floor to, to Vicki first if she wants to uh, expand on any of these. Um, if anyone else wants to comment on those um, or add any additional topics that we should be looking at, we're welcome to hear those. Um, so with that, Vicki, did you want to say something further? Sure. I mean, those are those are basically the broad strokes of what I wanted to come in and talk about. Um, it, in general, it's really just asking to put the tank back the way it was before the pandemic. I mean, we obviously had to make some changes to the way we operated during the pandemic to keep it safe and make sure everybody could still have access to the ski area while we were like trying to figure everything out. But now, you know, the world has largely returned to normal operations, but things have changed at the camp. It doesn't feel like the same place. It doesn't feel like the same warm and welcoming space that it was before. You know, I mean, people are still sitting in the, in the parking lot watching from their cars. And it's not because they're afraid of going inside and being around other people is because they don't feel like they're welcomed in there and it doesn't feel the same as it was. Um, in addition, I think, you know, historically, the community has been incredibly supportive of the Kank. And in particular, there have been people who put a lot of effort into making improvements there. And it's, it's discouraging and sad to feel like some of that stuff is being whittled away as we're, you know, now not allowing kids to have access to the game room upstairs, which was, you know, a, a big improvement that was made historically. And there's a lot of kids there that like to take a break from skiing and warm up and go upstairs and do, and it's a social space. It's a social space for kids. It's a social space for adults, for grandparents, for, you know, multi-generations. And it doesn't feel the same the way it is. The candy window um, in the location that it's in, it worked during the pandemic because nobody was in the building. But now it's sort of, you know, right in the middle of the windows. It's blocking the view of the windows. It's taking up a bunch of space in the lodge. And it, we could really do away with it. And the kids could come inside and get candy. There's some reason why they can't do that. They did that for decades. Or if people felt strongly about keeping it, you know, we volunteered to, in East Branch Builders, my husband volunteered to pay for and do the work to move it to the window that's in the kitchen to rearrange the kitchen, change around storage, whatever needs to be done to make sure that we're not losing space and to make the place you know, more functional. So we're not taking up that space in the middle of the ground. People can see out the windows. Um, in terms of the comfortable seating, I mean, when we showed up the first weekend that we were open this year, there were, all the couches were gone. There was, there was furniture stood up on its side, blocking the upstairs so nobody could go upstairs. And that was very clear. There were two folding tables and four wooden benches. So kids are sitting shoulder to shoulder at these two folding tables while their parents are 
standing beside them, you know, while they're eating their lunch. It's not a warm and it was not a warm and welcoming space. There has been some seating that has been added back, but we're just asking that we return the building to the warm, welcoming place that it was before the pandemic. And then with the hours, you know, this isn't something new that's being asked for. These are the hours that we've always kept at the camp on the weekends. It was always 10 to 4 on the weekends. And we're just asking that the hours be put back to where they've always been. So, I mean, those are the main things that, that you outlined. Those are the reasons why. It doesn't feel like any of these things are a heavy lift. You know, in fact, like anything that actually costs any money or requires any heavy lifting, we've offered to help do. We're not trying to ask the town or the rec department to do a bunch of work or spend a bunch of money. We're just asking them to bring back what we had before, which was this incredible place that a lot of people in this community love, that a lot of people have invested a lot of time and effort into, and that feels changed in its current state. Go ahead. Hi, Eugene. Um, Tavis, I pretty much agree with everything Vicki says. <clears throat> and I would also indicate, like, as far as like the upstairs goes, I, I can't think of any reason to block that off. And that's something that I know everyone here, especially those of us who have kids, they want access to them. It's not just Vicki, it's, 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 it's a broad opinion as far as that's concerned. We don't see any reason why they can't go up in the game room. And, and also, there's the seating issue is an issue. And, um, being able to have like the grandparents come in and sit and watch the kids ski. And like she said, we were in lunch over the weekend and like people were standing trying to eat their lunch. And it just, uh, it's, it's it seems silly to me, you know, especially in the post pandemic sort of era. So I pretty much echo everything she said. Anyone else? I, I agree with with all the asks. It, it it would be nice to have it return um, the way that it was. Yeah, and I also would volunteer to move furniture, um, and I could I could get other people to help as well. Absolutely, I all of us. We're trying. <laughs> we get stuff. Done. <laughs> May I? Sure. Okay. A couple of things I just want to touch on the upstairs. There are cameras, there are lots of blind spots, and there has been vaping in those blind spots. There needs to be supervised. There's been kids recently being, being caught, um, or I guess they weren't caught, they were smoking pot on the property and then were told afterwards that they were there. That's what we need. We need some volunteers to um, supervise, to oversee. Shawnee, you're in. You, you can volunteer all your I was there Friday night, and there were three kids working. I was there for my sister-in-law. We celebrated her birthday. We all came in. And um, a lot of the kids were just on their phones. There were three. Why could someone be posted upstairs that were paying? There were two uh, scheduled and one training. There was one training there. There's two going to be two scheduled. If there's three there, it's because somebody's training or Tara's there. or. But if we're paying something. someone to be there, why why? Why wouldn't if we're training upstairs? someone, though, they have to be no, downstairs. No, I understand that, but oh, okay. if, on a regular, you don't really need two people down there, especially like on a Friday night. You know what I'm saying? My mom handled it for years. It's okay. funny that you say that we're actually talking about or, or trying to figure out how to add more um, ski patrol on Friday and Saturday nights because it's so busy that they need a ski patrol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which was. is, I love, I which is fantastic. That, like I'm saying, okay. I watched the girls, they were on their phones. Um, the other thing with um, uh, saying you, the lunch, it was packed, they were standing. When we had three tables and a small like kitchen table in there, because you can't put the two long tables, it, it either comes up to the front by the trash cans or it blocks the equipment closets. It was a small kitchen table in that area. Even when they would have that extra kitchen table area that sat another eight people, we were still standing to eat on a busy Saturday or Sunday. So that's normal. Standing to eat at the cake is not a new thing. Would you agree, though, that we could move the candy back to... I am 100% personally, and this has not been a vote or anything else, personally, 100% um, against getting rid of the ski-up candy window because the kids love it. I have talked to every kid I can possibly talk to, which 
with my life lately has not been as many as I would like, but I will get there. We'll get a routine and we'll get there. Um, and every single one of them love the ski of candy window. Not a single one has said, ah, no, get rid of it. They're all like, no, it's awesome. Keep it. And the kink is for the kids. So I am 100% against getting rid of the ski of candy window. I also do not think that moving it to that kitchen window is an option because the door is here, parking lot's there, the traffic flow, and the kids skiing up to that window with the traffic flow doesn't work. I have ideas. It's going to take money. It's going to take some CIP. It's going to take some redesign. They're just ideas for now. It's something that has to be worked on. It's nothing that's going to get solved tonight. But I do have some great ideas. I'm always 100% for the Kang, and I don't think we put enough money into it. So don't say that to the budget committee, but I don't think we put enough money into it. We need supervision upstairs. And if we need to hire another staff member, if we can get them, then that's what we need to do. Fine. I'm fine with that. I am I am against taking out the, the can't taking out the candy window because the kids love it. Um the what was the other thing I was gonna do? Oh, the couch. There's a couch there. We've only ever had one couch. A couple times it was a couch and a love seat, but there's always been a couch. It's there. We have the couch, we laid it down. I agree. Coming in that first weekend, if that had been me coming in, I'd have been just as pissed off as you were, or upset or deflated or whatever, however you want to put it. Um, I, I agree. We need two or three big chairs. There, historically, it's been the yard sale. We take the gross furniture out and get rid of it and find whatever comes in the yard sale. We haven't had a yard sale, a real one, in three years. So we don't have that furniture. I get that we could put it on a Facebook and have some like that. It honestly didn't occur to me to do that. We'll take it. If somebody's got two or three nice comfy chairs they want to bring to the camp, bring them. More than that, it'll get a little crowded, but if you've got a few comfy chairs, bring them to the gang. Absolutely. I, I don't, we can't fill it full of couches. If we need more upstairs, fine. We need supervision upstairs before we can open that up, especially the day and age with the, the, the vaping and whatnot that's going on is not safe. That's my big concern upstairs. Those were the notes I had. Everything else I think was done. We took out, I mean, I agree. When you came in, the windows were covered, the mittens were blocking. I get it 100% and I totally agree with you. I also agree that, uh, that if we could move that candy, ski up candy window and open up some more space, great. And it's not going to happen overnight. We're halfway through the season this year. We need to move the entrance to the building itself to clear out to get to use that kitchen window. I think we need uh, to put more money in the CIP and do a whole lot more improvements to that building. Absolutely, maybe expand it. I was just saying expansion. Absolutely. Uh, I totally agree. A hundred percent. I totally agree. And I think that we are partly to blame because we haven't been addressing that and we should. Maybe we should have addressed it sooner than now. Um, but now we definitely need to and will. Hang on one minute. Yeah. Jane? Um, as far as the, the candy window, that, that seems to be like, the, as how, silly as it sounds, big sticking thing. And yes, the kids, the kids like it. Um, but I don't believe that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, the disadvantages far outweigh the advantages of the, of the window. Um, the, the space that we have is so limited. If we could just get everything back behind that counter, we've had consistently two employees in there. Keep your two employees in there. In the in the morning, that second person can help do all the checking in or whatever. But if everybody's in the same spot where the candy was, you get rid of the file cabinets, and that definitely could be done overnight. This isn't this isn't. Uh, we do have a lot of strong people here. Just get that candy back there, which means you have one employee that's taking care of all of that. If you need a second person to do the shooting of the tickets, that's negotiable. But use your second person, if you want to keep that person, to monitor upstairs if those blank spots in our cameras or cameras are pretty cheap these days. Yeah. It's a one and done. You get in trouble, you're out, you're done for the season. It's not, we don't, there's not that many issues. Um, 
the, the kids didn't like the window. But a lot of the kids, they're COVID kids. That's what they grew up with. So when the kids, when the, the person, I don't know if, if all of you are familiar with the setup, if anybody took pictures and showed you. We all visited. Okay. You're, you have your person at the window and you have all those file cabinets around. And it's it's not a real welcoming to come up, you know, to be a little and say, can I have, you know, Kit Kat? They're used to going to the window, getting their Kit Kat. So yeah, they like that. Is that that big an advantage to keep that, keep take up that floor space that we desperately need? Because yes, we we are busy. We do have a lot of people. And that's what we're looking for. Let's take care of this small problem this week and, and then address, you know, new windows or, or, or expansions or whatever. And I would recommend that board of selectmen appoint anybody who, you know, want to, like a committee. Vicki was asking me who ran the the, the CAG before Tara and, you know, well, it was Tony and Bob Doty and, and the likes. <clears throat> but before that, it was the Recreation Committee. They did all that, the, you know, all the baseballs and all of that. So <laughs> appoint a ski area committee to review <clears throat> past, present, and future development or, and then report back to you by say the end of the season, <laughs> where you guys can sit down and formulate, sorry about that, a future. Because we're not, we're not gonna be making expansions obviously between now and whenever, or moving doors <clears throat> or moving windows. We can move file cabinets. We can, you know, finish the season strong is, is, is my recommendation. So, Thank you. Travis had his hand up. You want to? Did you want to say something? I was just going to say I I don't know what your overarching recreation goals are, but anytime you know, you're discussing an expansion of the Kang Lodge, you know I know they use it in the summer sometimes. You want to consider the whole picture, you know, not a piecemeal sort of thing. Right. We were talking about that. I think I mentioned that. Um, the bathrooms are not sufficient in the summer right. at all. They may be fine for winter. But for the summer program, they're not. Um, we, you know, have yeah. lines and kids trying to change and whatnot for summer yeah. activities, and we definitely need to bigger bathrooms. Jim. I think to Jane's point, <clears throat> just if the, the kids love the candy window, obviously, but the kids would climb on the roof. That's where the candy lights, <laughs> right? So let's not promote in that. the short <laughs> in the short term. If you remove that from where it is now and say, we're working on a bigger plan that's going to make this work, we need the space inside, you're not just the bad person taking the candy window away from the kids, right? <laughs> it solves, like Jane said, it solves the problem in the now, and then you continue looking in the future. And if you're going to make improvements to that kitchen area, I'm sure it could be, I'm sure there's a lot of improvement that could be made there for cooking hot dogs and everything oh. and incorporate into a space that works, but to just sort of pause where we are right now and say we're going to make a big plan doesn't seem the best approach. I think maybe heading back towards, you know, getting the space back, having, I mean, say eight more people sitting down is eight more people sitting down, right? I don't disagree. A, a, another couch is another couch. Like it, it's better. There's a lot of people. It's great that it's busy. The cubbies used to be full of people's stuff, but now there's a table and the same, like it doesn't even get used anymore. So Getting back to that layout is a lot more comforting to a lot of people and a lot better use of space. And the candy window is easy to stop using in the moment and get some space and keep it in mind when you do make some expansions. If you want to try using it in the kitchen the way it is, I know there's some concerns about reach or anything like that. I think it's doable. I would be willing to move the two windows and at some point to try that out if you were going to stop using the candy area and you wanted to see what that felt that's not a huge project if you wanted to see what that felt like i know there's some concern about kids skiing up but you're skiing at a building you know there's there's i don't think you're going to come in at you know top speed skiing into a building 
it's the traffic. I, I understand the traffic and every, I, like I said, if you wanted to try it out. So certainly some, there's a lot to discuss about that, but I think like Jane said, moving towards the easy thing of shifting back towards the way it was and then the, figuring out the bigger plan might be a better route. Then I'm willing to put in any work or effort required there. Just, I have one more observation, which I thought was interesting. <clears throat> about, people really like the, um, <clears throat> I'm just yeah. going to get our bars yeah, no. She's going to get a Sorry. Sorry. Uh, no, I shouldn't have a Frito before I came in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach you. Uh, they're, they are used to that window. They like that window. But that's that's the COVID brain. That That's what we were used to. But the, the, and the same thing. Remember, before COVID, we didn't have room for all the kids who left their skis there every night. They were just... We had all those racks and the whole back room and everything. There's hardly anybody that leaves their skis there anymore in comparison to before. But it's, again, it's that COVID mindset. It's like us when we go to the grocery store. We're still standing six feet apart. We don't have to anymore, but we still are. And that's, you know, and it's just coming back. You know, it, it, it's a process. Anyway. Sorry, so if I can make, I, I, I agree with the idea about the cameras because that seems easy, but just as a person who's, you know, grown up at the keg and had my kids at the keg for a long time, and it's the upstairs is not like this bustling place with 15 people up there. Most of the time, there's no one up there. And, and when they do go up there, there's a few kids up there and mostly they're young kids. They're not vaping age kids. You know, we could put a few cameras up there. Yeah. They could put a few cameras up there, a few other cameras if, if it felt like it was necessary, or just so, you know, being cognizant of knowing who's up there. You know, maybe you walk up and you take a look at what's going on. If there's a couple of second graders up there and you can see them on the camera, you're not worried about it. If, you know, you see a bunch of high school kids go up there and you can't see what they're doing on the camera, then maybe, you know, you like, pop up certain. It just seems like, this could be done fairly safely and easily just using common sense and keeping an eye on the cameras we have or adding a camera. The, the other thing we haven't touched on at all and there's been really no, not much of a comment on is the hours. So we've cut back our hours on the weekends. The weekends are the busiest time at the keg. The weekend afternoons, especially a sunny, beautiful afternoon is the busiest time of the day. It's the time at the keg that the most that you see most traction in the middle school and high school age kids because they're sleeping in, because Loon's really busy on the weekends, and we've cut back our hours on the weekends. Um, it feels like we're putting a, a lot, Ryan in particular, but but you know, we're putting as a town a lot of money into the gang. Ryan's putting in a ton of work into the gang to make snow and room in difficult conditions. He does a beautiful job. And right. we're not we're not using the gang to its full potential because. You know, we're, we have such limited hours. Even if we could just get back the hours we've had for decades, that would be great. But, you know, just another thought, like for years we've asked if we could have Friday afternoons once winter activities is over. Winter activities at Linwood used to feel, at least to me when I was a kid, like it was all winter long. It was seven or eight weeks that every Friday we went up. Now it's four, it's four Fridays in January. So the all of February and March, you know, we're not going to winter activities. This year we have two makeups in February. But so there is no winter activities in February, usually, and not in March. You know, that would be another opportunity that we could open for a few hours and, you know, have more availability to the community. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I just, I think there's, I think we have a community that's really supportive and really loves this place and recognizes how precious it is and how rare it is and wants to see it thrive. And there are ways that we could increase the access for people and ways that we could use it, you know, really use it more, use it to its full potential and and just kind of get as much from it as, as it had to offer, which is a lot. It's a pretty incredible place. So I just, I, I want to reiterate, I think it would be a great idea to have a group of volunteers that would form, you know, a committee, people that have interests in the keg, locals that use it, community, you know, political representation, our ski coaches that are using it a ton. You know, I think those people have a big stake in the keg and love the place and want to see it be the best it can be. If we could get a group of people that were passionate about it, that would bring energy and work and potentially like, you know, 
resources to make it better, it it would it could be a real you know a real benefit to the place. Oh, wait, wait, did you want to put your hand on the No, I think one of the concerns that I heard when I visited about the use of upstairs was the window up there that uh, they had cut through it to put some venting system through it and that it wasn't sealed. Am I correct on that? Yeah, the window's still uh, broken. And but, you know, I certainly agree. I didn't grow up in like that. My kids have skied the cank. My grandson has uh, skied the cank. But by the same token, I think it's a great thing. I mean, I heard people emailing me, calling me. I got a call from South Carolina today from one of the former selectmen who put the snowmaking in up there. I think one of his relatives back in the room there. Um, but, you know, he was saying, Jack, I heard it's going to close. I said, Billy, it's not going to close. I said, that's the furthest thing from anybody's mind. I said, we want to make something that's good better. And I think the ideas that are being thrown out here tonight can do that. I personally would support some type of a committee that has somebody from either the board of selectmen or the budget committee or the town manager. She's not busy enough. Um, you know, somebody um, that is a decision maker along with the, the users, the end users are always important to me. They live it day in and day out. I'm not there. I don't ski the can. I teach at the adaptive program at Moon and Bretton Woods. So I'm not at the can anymore. My grandson's down in Boston now. So consequently, the, the end users, get a teenager there, get a couple of parents, get somebody from the budget committee, uh, the town manager, and off. And, you know, make something worthwhile. Don't have meetings for the sake of having meetings. Have a plan, you know, and some hard, fast ideas that, would, like I said, make a good program a better program. So I thank you for your interest. Uh, I, I was appreciative of your email. Um, and, you know, and all of some people here, obviously, they have a vested interest. I mean, talk with Charlie. Charlie spent 17 years up there. Uh, uh, not Charlie, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, and people put their time and effort. Your husband did a lot of work there. Um, and it was volunteer, people donating, um, donating not only money and goods, but time. And time is valuable. So uh, thank you all. Um, I just wanted to address a couple of things that Vicki pointed out. Yeah. Um, that you know, just keep an eye on the monitors and just walk upstairs every once in a while and check. It sounds easy, <laughs> it sounds good. But from someone that was there, when we even when we had monitors and still get kids were getting punched in the face and getting bloody noses because you can't do it all. You can't be selling candy or checking people in or selling tickets or and running upstairs and making sure that people are just walking onto the slope and getting on the rope without checking in. Um it, it's it, it's Sounds easy, and I and I get it. To me, it even sounds like, well, yeah, that's doable. It's not that easy. It's truly not that simple. Um, and then we added Friday nights during COVID um, when our kids weren't going to Luna and there was nothing going on. We added seven to nine Friday nights. It was um, had been LRT Loon Race Teams training night was Friday nights um, because our kids had winter activities. It made sense that they use Friday nights because most of the kids wouldn't. Still have the stamina to ski after doing winter activities, but you're right, it used to be seven or eight weeks, and it is a lot shorter now. Um, during COVID, we added um, Friday nights because LRT wasn't training at the Kang. When they came back, we moved them to Sunday so that we could keep Friday nights because it is busy, it is popular, people love it, it's fantastic. I don't want to take that away. We moved them to Sunday. In order to make it work for them, we have to close at three. So we could move them back to Friday nights and not have Friday night skiing and close at four on Sunday instead. But you can't have, we can't have both. We, we just can't have both. Um, and you, you um, I'll address Saturday afterwards. You, I've heard people have said, well, what if, this isn't for LRT. This is for Lincoln kids. This is for Woodstock kids. This is for this community. Why are you giving them preference? That's not fair at all. LRT has been a great partner to the Kang and to the Linwood ski team. They provide gates and equipment and support and coaching that we wouldn't have. Our Linwood ski team kids are welcome to train with LRT anytime LRT trains, anytime, and to get the benefit of more training, even though they pay to rent the facility for now Sunday nights, used to be Friday nights. Their support of Linwood ski team hasn't changed. The partnership between the Kank Rec area, Kank Ski Slope, and Loon 
um, is phenomenal. It's something that I don't ever want to have jeopardized. It is a, a definite asset for this community. Every time that the, the um, groomer breaks down or, or a snow gun or something, they're always helpful. When we couldn't get the ski slope mowed, they stepped up and mowed it. They're, they've always been very helpful. And um, boy, I wish I could hear what Jane was saying. Right now. <laughs> no. Anyway, it, it's, a, it's a partnership that is important um, and valuable to this community, not just to the Kank, but to the Linwood ski team, to, you know, to everything. Um, it, 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 we, and we did lose Saturday, an hour on Saturday as well. That is a staffing issue. We have, we have um, an awesome groomer. He's phenomenal. He is like so many other people this day and age, post COVID, that has to have a second job. Um, a lot of people are in that same boat that they can't work and make a living with just one job anymore. Unfortunately, with a, almost 7% um, cost of living will increase. It, it happens. The only way that he can get there and get it groomed and get it done and get it done right um, so that we can ski Friday, uh, Saturday night as well is if we close at three. So he has that hour to groom so he can get to his second job. Now, it's easy as well, just hire somebody else to groom it. It's not that simple. And Dave Dovalock's wife could probably attest to that because Dave was very particular about who, how, and when that slope got groomed, especially during the snowmaking time. Um, so it's not as simple as saying, just throw someone else in the groomer and do it. Um, uh, something else I wanted to point out that was brought to my attention. I couldn't make it to, excuse me, the Kankathon this Saturday, the first one I've missed in I don't know how long. But I thought bringing a three-year-old and a 19-month-old was not going to be good, so I didn't go. Um, however, I was told by several people that having the ski up candy window and a diff it, where it is now was a huge benefit to Doug and those trying to get um, things done in the kitchen and prepared and ready for the lunch and whatnot and the awards and everything else that was going to happen um, after the Kankathon, that it freed up it, um, a lot of time and space there to help get things done. So they pointed out to me that during different events throughout the year, having the ski up candy window where it is and not right where it used to be that, you know, candy sales and whatnot was a huge benefit um, and, and made it a lot easier. So I just wanted to point that out. Also the donating of, I mean, we take donations all the time and that's how it should be. However, the volunteering, is not the same as it was in the old days. And it can't be. We can have volunteers for certain things, but because of insurance reasons, we can't have volunteers cooking. We can't have volunteers handling money, um, you know, things like that that needs that, you know, we need people to do. So you need two staff members on a Saturday for lunch. You have to, whether you have 9 million volunteers, you still have to have those. Um, volunteers are important. And I, believe me, I volunteer everywhere every time I get a chance. Um, and I get that, but it's not as easy as in the old days. We just all volunteered, wouldn't go build it. It doesn't happen that way anymore, unfortunately. And I don't like that as much as anybody else doesn't like it. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. Mr. Lux had to Yeah, Aaron, Aaron, did you want to speak? Well, and I, I think this is people online. Wait, wait, how wait, awesome wait. the tank is. What? <laughs> uh, you know, definitely been very fortunate to land here and get a part of this, um, what, what the tank is. And, this week we have the David Dovalock Memorial Paint Classic. I hope people can swing by at some point. Uh, I just wanted one clarifying comment. Um, as far as Linwood Ski Team, we're very fortunate. Um, we we train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday. And you know, we, Plymouth used to be there. We took over that day to because we, you know, it's such a it's, it's it's made a big difference and we have some of the best skiers in the state and in the East um, as a result of it. Uh, with regards to Moon Race Team training, I also have that hat. Uh, we'll take anything. It, and there was, you know, we could have gone later. I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, I do, you did answer it and say, as far as staffing and things like that, but you know, whatever, and that goes for Linwood Ski Team too. Anything we can do anytime, we'll do it. You know, it could be, you know, the, the community, after school, that's awesome. All the different things, the freestyle that's happening. It's 
it's not just one thing, it's the whole ski community. And uh, I would I would be willing to be on a committee uh, that would, if one is formed, I think I have a lot to offer. And uh, if it goes that way, please reach out. Thank you, Mr. Lance. Jim, can I ask you to put that on gallery view so we can, I can't, I can only see one beard and then I see a bunch of little squares. <laughs> I, or, is that, yep. Yeah, there, there we go. I know there's a lot more people on there. All right. Paul, you have your hand up. Go ahead. You're muted, Paul. Unmute, Paul. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Um, I'm listening to all the comments, but I, I haven't heard anything from our recreation director. Would she happen to be there? And can we get some comments from her about um, the proposals and what's going on? I mean, obviously, she is the I would think the person that takes care of the recreation, she might have some words of wisdom or some thoughts on it. Sure, Paul, I am here. Um, we, when the suggestions came through, we kind of vetted them. Um, one thing that hasn't came up is I don't make all these decisions in a bubble. Woodstock is very involved and Cheryl Weirden has been the recreation point person since she's been elected there. Um, so Cheryl, Tammy and I sit around before long before the season, I think it started in May yeah. of last year with what worked, what didn't, what we should tweak. Um, lots of comments on like the opening and how it looked and um, staff wasn't sure what we were gonna do. We still had snowmaking going on. So that was the reason the couch was up because we can't have it proximity to the wood stove when we're making, when they're using that. So that took some discussion with Brian to say, you know, can we just use the Renai and not use the wood stove during that time? Then the couch was knocked back down. Um, as far as the candy window, I'm I see the same thing that Tammy does. Um, it's hard when kids come in to get the money from their parents to then go back out, and we tell them they can go right up and ask them for it. It's not the same experience for them. They really think they're all that when they use the window. Whether that's because they don't remember it from before, I don't know. But I it it's the giggles that you get when they're they're that cool. Um, right. when they do that. And there was, I was there all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Um, and I saw that repeatedly happening that the kids would take their skis off, come in, talk to mom, and then go back out and get candy. Or, you know, like it's not just a convenience factor. It's a, um, I don't know, rite of passage, whatever they think that they're doing. Um, as far as I'm probably the shortest of my staff, um, I know, I, I know, Jim, that you offered to change that counter. I definitely could not fit over the counter to reach a kid if we relocated it there. Um, but, you know, we're always open to ideas. We never even thought about the ski up window until you came up with that idea last year, so right. two years ago. So, um, and all of, all of the above, like, I think that if we, we've talked about, have we outgrown the building and trying to change have 60 kids change into bathing suits during summer camp in two bathrooms is, is a challenge. And there's, we've talked about a stackable washer and dryer over there for when kids have, you know, whether it's bathing suits or accidents or things like that, that answer, you yeah. know, there's so many different things that we've talked about that we, if we did a renovation expansion onto that building that we have for years, it's been talked about a deck off the upstairs. So people could watch races from up there and hang out there on a beautiful sunny day. So, um, <clears throat> All of that has been talked about. Um, trying to think of some of the other, you know, Cheryl wasn't able to be here, but. Yeah, it was um, a lot. <clears throat> yeah. Can I point one thing out? And I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about personnel at all. However, our rec director, who is a salaried employee, put in 64 and a half hours last week covering program, programming and still worked all weekend. So it's, I mean, her heart and soul is in this. This is not. You know, I want everybody to know she does as much as she possibly can, and then some. People get stuff going and get stuff done and do things. So I don't know if I was supposed to say that or not, but I did. So there, I was. I, I would just make note that it just seems to be a difference of opinion between what the townspeople want and your perceptions of the candy window, and your perceptions are your perceptions. So there's no way to really quantify you know, the pros and cons, you know, without doing like some sort of weird study. But what I would say is you guys are elected officials and your townspeople are telling you the changes they would like to see. So I'd just like you to keep that in mind. I did a weird study. I talked to as many, about 20 kids 
that give or take. That, well, I can name about to, 20 adults who disagree. Well, it's in my, I, not that the kank is not for adults. I don't disagree with that. However, the kids come first. Always have for me, always will. The kids love the ski up candy window. They love it. I will fight for it as long as I can because the kids love it. I, I understand that the, that the grownups and the parents don't appreciate it or don't want it, don't like it. I get that. And I understand. I hear you. I still will fight for those kids till the end because the I, kids love it. I, I, Dream, you want... I don't think it matters. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Said, the disadvantages far away. Okay. And, and I think it can be moved, and a candy window can still exist without being in the piece of this. And I think you brought a kid there not long ago, and going to the counter was pretty. Yeah. <laughs> you actually got to interact with the people inside and the staff yeah. and check in and take your mittens off mm -hmm. and get warmed up. I mean, there were some social advantages to going inside, too. Yes, it's convenient to zoom in on your skis and get your candy and zoom out. And that is cool. I don't cool. disagree with that. I know the kids like it. I just think that. It's not a good use of the space. Yeah. If you want to keep but it, it should be moved good. somewhere. And maybe we can find them. We do keep sort of skipping over the fact that it's more about the usable space and seeing outside from inside and having it usable for people other than it seems to be focused on whether the kids like it or not. But <clears throat> ultimately, it's the use of the building. There's not enough room. You guys keep saying there's not enough room, and that thing's taking up a ton more room in there. That's not that argument. We're missing tables over it, storage over it, vision to the outside, so people aren't using it like they used to. So it seems silly to keep talking back and forth about who likes a candy window and who doesn't. Yep. It's not really like, of course, everyone likes a candy window, right? It's about the use of the building for now, and maybe think about that candy window in the future. It blocks. Seems like, to make sense. It blocks a ton of the hills. One of the four there. windows. Yeah. So one of the four. Can we move forward on at least agreeing maybe to put together a committee of volunteers, of people who are stakeholders, people who use the kank, who love it, who run it, who are elected officials, who are coaches, so that we can get like a broader input on things going forward in terms of really just trying to maximize the facilities, improve the facilities protect what we have and and use the place to its to its fullest. Can we agree to that? Is that something we can agree to in a meeting? I don't know what the process is. Yeah, I think it's, but no, 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 no. Wait, that's something we'd have to discuss with Woodstock. We can't make those decisions without Woodstock. Okay. That's operations. Well, I'll take a motion that, that we talk to wait Woodstock. Minute, wait, a wait a minute. Let me finish, please. Thank well, you. I'll make a motion that the Board of Selectmen of Lincoln go on in favor of supporting the setting up of a committee, including Mr. Laux, yourself, um, Tara, a board of selectmen from Lincoln. And if Woodstock chooses to be part of that committee, fine. If they don't, they want to uh, let an equal number of people from Woodstock, fine. But at least we'll go on record as saying we support it, or I'll make a motion that I support it anyways. Exactly. Go ahead. Why don't you guys just study this thing like she said? Cut that thing off on Saturday when you got all these people. You put 10 kids an hour in that front room and see what it does to you. Do that twice in a month and see what it does. And then go back to the other way and see what it does. And if you don't like that window, it seems to me like somebody ought to be able to make a decision to get rid of it. The kids love it. That's the first step of the committee to do. Joe, that's the first of the committee to do. Well, that when we put the snowmaking in up there with Danny Brown, you know how many people come and said, you know what that cost? I said, don't cost you nothing, because I'm paying for it. I own the stuff, and I'm doing it. So it didn't cost anybody anything. But then days are gone. There's a million people a month changing jobs for more money. Do you think you're going to pay peanuts and get them up there? The volunteer days are done, boys. You either come up with some cash. You've got a billion dollars worth of taxable revenue. You can't throw a little money. I must be missing something. <laughs> it's the words of wisdom we're, we're, we're absorbing. You know, we're halfway through the season, too. I don't want to pull the kitty, you see a candy window rug out from under the kids' feet halfway through the season. Seriously. I just, I don't want to do it. I, there's been a lot of good input. I, I want to move on. Um, this is my suggestion. I think the committee idea is a good idea. And I'd like to move forward with that. Um, I, I don't think we're going to get a committee that's going to meet and, uh, enough to make any substantial changes before the end of this ski season. 
but I think the purpose of the committee should be um, more long range. Number one, looking at the operation, the day-to-day -day operation there and what operational changes, improvements should be made. I think they should be looking- you? I need to interrupt you because we have worked hard the last few years to improve Lincoln and Woodstock joint relationship. And now we're talking about what we need to do on a committee that they haven't even been consulted on. They are part of the operations of the CAG. I'm not we saying we infrastructure. I'm not saying we I know, it. but I don't want to make the decision that we're going to have a committee and do all this stuff I, without a decision. Motion, wait a minute, Debbie. My motion was not. No. It's set we're stepping on toes. My motion was challenge. saying that we, the town of Lincoln Select Board, a, uh, a favor with the establishment of a committee. I heard you. I heard you. Okay. But what I'm saying is so we, need to have a joint, of a committee. we need to have a joint Lincoln Woodstock Board of Select meeting, which is what I wanted to do before all you came in to talk about this, but it was time sensitive. They couldn't meet tonight. They couldn't get it done. You know, they, they, the time frame, they weren't available. It was too quick. Um, I wanted to have a joint Lincoln Woodstock Selectman meeting with both boards and have y'all come in and talk to all of us. And it couldn't happen soon enough. And it was time sensitive and we didn't want the whole world. I mean, there was a very misleading Facebook post out there that shook everybody up today. I literally got, I counted them, 22 phone calls and three people came up to me in Market Basket in Plymouth yelling at me because the can is closing. Um, that, I didn't want that to happen and it did anyway. That's why we put it on the agenda for tonight. The talk and raise it. We're not closing the can. This is not what's happening. We need to get Woodstock involved because they are part of the operations of the CAC. I don't, we can't make it. I think a committee is a great idea. I do. I'm not going to support saying, oh yeah, we're going to definitely have this committee without talking to the other half of this first. Woodstock also supports the CAC, the operations of the CAC. They need to have a seat at the table before we make any decisions on what we're going to, yeah, have a committee and I want them to do this, 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 and this. We haven't even talked to them about it yet. We've worked really hard the last few years to strengthen the relationship between Lincoln and Woodstock for our recreation department, for the kids. And, and I don't want to step on toes and piss people off by making decisions without them. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. Um, so maybe going forward, we, we do make that joint meeting and we can we can reach Yes, me thank you. And yep. yes, you know, and, you know whenever it's, Community. Yes, and that's what I wanted. That's what I've been trying to get done. And in the meantime, can we move the candy counter? <laughs> <laughs> Give me something can, to throw at her. Can Tara make that decision to? I'm saying no. Maximum. If, if it's my choice, no. The kids love it, and I'm sorry you don't. And I'm sorry the space is more important I love to you it too. But, but the kids love space. it, and I, I, if it's if we're putting it to a vote, we're not I'm asking no. to take the candy away. No, I know, I get it. They love the ski of candy window. I will fight for it. And is that a solar? I think kids would do it. You know, that's a good question. It's a Jake. joint. It's, that's I a joint vote. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, my yeah, philosophy is, I like to be involved. He hates candy and children. That, <laughs> <laughs> he wants that to be my campaign yes. motto. But hate candy and hate kids. No, just um, he does. My philosophy is, is that the Board of Selection, Selectmen, our role is not to micromanage each department. Right. I'm not going to go to the Public Works Department right. and see what kind of shovels they're using and tell them to use the other kind of shovel. In the same vein, I'm not going to go to Tara and say, you can or can't sell candy here, but you have to sell it over here. So but she's the with, one I have to convince. With, oh, geez. With, with that Don't in mind, for that. with that in mind, <laughs> I have a real strong opinion on this. We okay. don't want to hear it. I know you don't want to hear it because it's the totally opposite of yours. I That's think that there needs, and, and, and you brought this up, Travis, that there, there needs to be a balance between uh, uh, meeting the needs of the kids and meeting the needs of the adults who are there. We talk about lack of adult supervision, but we also are saying, too bad about the adults. We're going to take up this big block of space to sell candy when for, for 40 something years we were selling it over there. All right. The candy tastes the same when you sell it at, at, at the counter. And that experience of going up to a window, I'm sure it's wicked cool. Mm -hmm. All right. A 60 year old doesn't really care about that, but I'm sure the 10 year old loves it. Yes. Um, but I just don't think that it's worth the experience of the 10 year old to be out there skiing up to window to get candy 
and giving up that experience of being inside a place with his adults, there's kids, there's hanging out, there's clowning around going on, there's kids running around faster than they should be, but it's fun, it's learning, it's part of what makes, it's not the skiing, it's the whole experience. And, and I really Except think it's unimportant <laughs> where the candy gets sold. That's my opinion. And I know that there's some kids who love it, but I think when they're 60 years old, looking back, they're not gonna care about where they got their candy. They're gonna care about who they met, what adults told them to stop doing that, what, you know, with how they learned to ski. I just think there's more important things. Mm -hmm. I'll stop there. I know Jim I'm had hand all up. the kids. Jim had hand up. <laughs> <laughs> I was skiing here 60 years ago, long before 90% of the people were even born. I enjoyed skiing here. There was plenty of room to go in the hot, get warm, buy a little something if I wanted to buy it. If that, the cake has really grown. If that building is too small, yes. let's think about adding on to it. And yes, if they need that little bit of space, the kids go in, get money from the parents, go back out and buy candy at the window. Can't they buy candy inside? They're going inside anyways. The kids also love the upstairs. <laughs> Thank you. I agree. I, I hope I you agree. Know. But there was never a candy window when I was there. You know, if I think wait, wait. years ago, and the yeah. teaching you used to practice it. They used to practice it. They still do. They, they used to be in the corner with a sunny child. Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. Was there. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, that point was. Lincoln would be willing to make a committee. We're not making the committee. Now, not which thought, no, Lincoln is willing to make the committee. Are you willing to make it? I don't think he said we're making the committee. I didn't. You were absolutely right. Right. Thank you. It wasn't Lincoln Jack. It was, was willing OJ to that started telling Jack what the motion. committee should be. Jack made the motion. Uh, are you all set? No. Jill? I mean, I ran that candy counter for so many years. It was ridiculous. And a good thing about that candy counter being where it was in that side behind in the kitchen was simply that you got eyes on the kids. I made them do math. I made them tell me exactly what they owed me. So they constantly had to do, they had to figure it out themselves. They had to figure out their own change. I, I didn't do it for them. A lot of them went and they all had their tabs. I mean, that's part of like growing up. They just said, you know, I have such and such on my tab. So then I'm learning the families. I'm learning who's belonging to who. They know I'm a safe person. And I had one camera upstairs, one little video monitor upstairs. I was able to, by myself, do all of the candy, do the checking in. I could see the kids coming in, write it on a book. I, they didn't even have to come in until they were ready to get their ticket. I had their tickets ready for them. Their names were already in the book. They were signed in. They could go skiing as quick as they wanted. And if I saw a messing around upstairs, I literally walked to the stairs at the end of the kitchen, walked upstairs and said, you're downstairs. You can come back in like 15, 20 minutes, but for now, you're out. Usually she yelled. I did. I didn't get to the, to the top of the stairs. I was like, get out. And they heard me and they came down. And I don't know. So for me, I thought it was very like efficient, like when safe. safe, they knew their expectations. Yeah. Like there was no messing around because I was in, I'm Natalie's child. There was <laughs> no messing around. And they came in, they did their thing. They got their candy. They went up to the top. I mean, my daughter used to buy candy for the price of the candy at the counter, go to the top of the mountain and sell it for twice as much to the kids at the top of the mountain. Oh, you know, so it doesn't even she matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. There is. There's a store at the top of the mountain that you're willing to pay. 
I'm just saying. So that's all I wanted to say. It's like very a social aspect. You got eyes on the kids. You know, like a lot of times, I don't know, other people might not do it, but I always knew where kids for the most part were while they were skiing because it was really important to me. There's a lot of little kids and like my grandkids can't even reach the candy window. They're too short mm -hmm. to like ski up and go get candy. So, huh? My grandkids, one of them is younger than yours. And she, she skis up and gets candy. She Absolutely, she okay. does. 100%. I don't. Jim, I know you had to handle yeah, that. Yeah, there's a there was mentioned a window that's broken that needs to be fixed that yes. we're use the upstairs. Is that something we could um volunteer some help with? Yes, but so, we that so that I don't throw someone under the bus, can I just give you a call later? Sure. Thank you. She's waiting for the person that broke it to fix it. Yeah. Yes, well, no. may or may not work. And he's <laughs> not it. So I, I well, that I'll, seems a little bit of a yeah. stubborn approach. We can just fix it. Oh, um, All right. absolutely. I'll call you later. Okay. I, I don't want to call someone out in a public meeting like that that's not here to defend themselves. So I'll give you a call later. But yes, um, Carabin. What took him? Sorry. What? That's what I thought. Can't help myself. You are um, Carabin. 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 You know, it actually in charge of ordering and all the candy and stuff now. Thank you. I love you that you do that. And all the food and all the everything else and selling the candy at the window. Do you have anything to add to tonight's meeting? I don't really. I understand everybody's concern. And I'm really just an observer because I'm happy to do it whatever way it needs to be done. And I hear what Jill's saying. It's not as easy now as it used to be because there are more people and different people and all that, but it is true. If you're in that side and you can see the cameras, you do know what's going on. I am also the one that busted the kids smoking pot. So Absolutely. I didn't know. No. Thank you for that. <laughs> I didn't find out three times until the end of the day when people come up and go, hey, he's smoking pot. Why do you wait until four right. o'clock to come tell me? Tell right. me at 10 o'clock so I can go out at 10 o'clock and grab him by the throat, not right. wait until four. Right. <laughs> right? Right. So that, if I was there again, would be taken care of immediately, as Bill said. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of the season, though, on to be Tara's devil's advocate, you, her, and Cheryl got together, had conversations, and made a decision that this is how we're going forward. At this point in time, and this is not to say anything negative about anyone that's working there, I have to say I'm the only one that understands how the tank works now. Thank you. And I'm only there on Saturday and Tuesday. Right. And every Saturday and Tuesday, I'm cleaning up a mess from all of the people that worked there the other day that put toilet stuff in the toilet, but don't scrub it. Put change in the change thing that it doesn't belong in. Don't pull out hot dogs for anybody for on Saturday. because So then I get there and I've got a case of frozen hot dogs. Nobody seems to get what is happening. So nobody is able to do what needs to be done which is why it keeps staying the way it is because it there's no good quality help out there right now. And the ones that we have are doing the best they can, but they don't quite understand the concept. Right. And they're 18. Well, yeah, and when they start to at three o'clock, they're like, oh, cool. I don't use that yeah. toilet. See ya. I mean, there's a 50 year old woman in there on Monday nights that doesn't know how to clean a toilet. So <laughs> it's just, it's difficult. So that's why I we're here. I get that all of you guys have an issue, and I totally understand what your problem is. But on my end of the deal, <laughs> I love her. <laughs> I'm watching this, for lack of a better term, because I am a bad and shit show go on, and it only gets cleaned up on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and I'm exhausted. So until somebody else wants to step up and be a quality something, right. it's too hard to do everything you want. But if you want to move the candy window on Saturday, I am willing to move the candy window on Saturday to the kitchen, and we'll see how Saturday goes with me and a lunchtime person, and I will report back to all the people that want the report back. It just, right now, it is very difficult from an operational standpoint because of the lack of everything. But would it be more difficult to add it there? You're saying 
it's better if it's separated? No, I'm not saying it's better. I'm just saying nothing is actually running at, at the end. Like from your point of view, you come in, you get a ticket, you go ski, you eat your hot dog, and your life has changed for the worse because things have changed. But from my point of view on the other side of the counter, it doesn't matter where that candy is. Everything else is still just, see ya, and I'm standing there going, oh, thanks. Did you see the lady changing the diaper on the table? Did you see that kid throw all his food on the floor and the mom just went, come on, let's go. Did you see that other kid go outside and get four things of snow and then steal Kool-Aid, dump it in, get it all over the floor? But I'm running around doing all this stuff and I've got somebody over here. The, the ticket thing's not working. The ticket thing's not working. He doesn't have a pack. Can I get a season pack? I've never been here before. How's this thing working? Right. The drop's not working anymore. Oh, is that the like, it's just, yes. it's all over the place. And it's impossible for it to be the way it used to be. It is definitely impossible for that to happen. It's different. But I am willing, if my boss is not going to cut my throat for saying this, to bring the candy on set. Not tonight, anyway. Just to see what happens and to see, because that is definitely the biggest issue I am hearing, <clears throat> other than the upstairs. And the hours. And the hours. Right. And I can't do anything about this. I'm not an hour. Sharon, th thank you for your perspective. Okay, Vicki? I, I really appreciate <laughs> I really appreciate you saying that. And I, I think that, um, you know, one thing that a lot of us have noticed too is the staff is super young. And I know like everybody has like sweet. staffing all sweet, very nice, very nice kids, all doing their best they can. And we appreciate them. And, you know, there's been a lot of staff and maybe it does take more teenagers than it, it takes three teenagers to do the work. It's a woman yeah. and they're still not doing the same. But what I wanted to say for that is, you know, I think that we could do better as a community in supporting the Kank in terms of staffing. So yes. this is another thing I was thinking, if we could get this committee together, this is something that I would really love to see us working on. I've never seen a job at the Kank advertised. I've never seen it on Facebook. I've never seen it publicly. Maybe I'm not looking in the right place, but I've never seen it. And there's a lot of people in this community that really love the Kank, <laughs> that support it, that believe in it, that if they knew, hey, you know, we need some, uh, some people who can work the counter. We need sleep jobs. I'm an emergency room doctor. I live a quarter of a mile from the Kank and ski there probably five days a week. I've never been asked to ski patrol. I'd be happy to be on a backup list for ski patrol if we were short staffed on people. And I know that there are other people out there who have young kids that go to the Kank. I don't want to call Nicole out or other people <laughs> that would, you know, that would be willing to be like, I'll do the training. I'll get on the schedule. I'll, you know, that would be willing to take time. I'm there watching ski training, you know, when the high school and middle school are training. I'll run the, the counter. There are people who would do it. Yeah. I feel like we need to do a better job as a community of adults and parents in, in getting involved and in being willing to work at the camp. But also, like, do people know that there's a need there? Like, I've like, never seen that there was a need. That. That, has no. anybody else ever seen that there's a need? I mean, I don't... You know, I, that's that's another thing that I think we could improve on. I think the public would be there and would be willing to get involved and be supportive if they were asked, if it was advertised, if they knew that there was a need. And Tammy, if you do need me to do a couple of nights, you can call me. That's fine. If you need yeah. me to. Whoever we're all there. passionate. Yes. That's the whole you thing. Know, I can't do any days, but I love to do nights. I heard that. And yeah. Like, yes. Right? Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 Something else I want to point out to you where you said staffing and they're all sweet and they're all nice. Um, there have been some extremely negative comments, gestures, um, you know, things uh, to the staff this year. We literally had some of these staff members that will not work at the Kank if they know that there's somebody's going to be there um, because they've been treated badly. Um, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm not going to point anything out. I'm just going to ask all of you to please try to, if you're having a bad day, don't take it on the staff. If you're pissed off because the you can't see out the window or the couch isn't there or there's no chairs or the whatever, whatever the issue is, or that it's three o'clock and not four o'clock and we're closing, don't take it out on staff because that has been happening. And I would ask you to please don't do that. I do have a quick question about that. So the afternoon is one to three, but I feel like wasn't it always twelve thirty? It is twelve thirty. Yeah, yeah. All right. It was 
10 to, to noon, and, and then we closed for an hour because there was no inside during COVID. Yeah. And then one to three in the afternoon, but that was because of COVID. Now that we're back inside and having lunches, it's it's noon to noon, 12 30, like it always was. Okay. As far as shutting down the lunch. 12 20. And so it sounds like LRT is flexible about times on Sunday. Yes. Is that's what we're hearing, that it's not LRT being rigid about times that's making us close early on Sunday. So have we talked to, has, is Ryan online? Is he able to tell it's us? It's not only Ryan though. It's, it's or, or Nate or whoever's doing the grooming that it, it's not possible to groom and stay open. It's before. Sunday um, is 10 to three. So his staff gets there at 930, get things going, get things set up, start the toe, get it warmed up, et cetera, et cetera. And then we close at three. Because it's half an hour for LRT to get their stuff together, get on the slopes and get start training. And they're done at 515 so that our staff aren't putting in 12 hour days. So they can work their eight hours or so, or so, because it's usually more. It's it's not that we don't want to extend it. Um, we, we could stay open till four, have them start at 430, but then our staff's going to be there for 10 hours a day. And that's not fair. That's not okay. That we would did that to make it work just to make it work so that we could keep Friday nights and not put them back to Friday nights. And, Three times six is eight hours. Just which is correct. We have two tow operators, one that they can only work right. on Sundays and the other one works every shift. You would like every other weekend off. We're trying to work right. on. Yeah, I hear that there's a certification or something now. Just a training. Be trained. Our insurance company mandates that that person does the that, shift. Is that just trained by Ryan though? Yep. Or is it? Yeah. Trained? Oh, yep. okay. Yep. So could we maybe like set up a time where people who are interested in- We did have one person that, like, that so far has trained. But, um, but I mean, but yeah. the public people don't know that though. I mean, there are other people who would be willing to get trained and run the tow. If that's the rate limiting factor here, if that's the thing that's not allowing the race team to train in advance of their first race, if that's the thing that's not allowing us to stay open the until four on the weekend. The race team's never been kicked off. Well, no, I'm not saying the race team was kicked off. I'm saying like we couldn't tr we couldn't train early in the season this year before the first races. That was weather. We, we didn't have snow. Train. Right. Yeah. That was weather. We did train. We just yeah. didn't have gates. We didn't well, right. We didn't, right. 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 We yeah. didn't have gates and we didn't have we didn't have the depth of snow to be able to push. That was down. weather. Not yeah. We made snow and it rained and then it got warm and then we made snow and it rained and then it got warm. And so it was that was that was a, a weather anomaly that had nothing to do with staffing so just, or anything just else. again if we could maybe like if we could get it out to the public there are a lot of supportive people that i think would be willing to say you know if if you're stuck and we need co-operators let's get people trained let's get more people on board i totally agree the, the right, tough part so early, you know, when people are, we run into this person or that person and say, hey, we're looking for someone once one day a week and oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And then Jill's a perfect example. And then this happens. I changed my mind. Now I can do it. Yeah. So it's, no, it's it's hard. I mean, we, we ask, we seek, we we look, we both make phone yeah. calls. And, and it's, the only other requirement is they do have to be over 18. Like Andrew Wilson was so excited to finally be oh, yes. at the trimester of school. Yeah, no, he needs to but, get coming yeah, back. Yeah. Um, yeah, take that semester off. All right, well, I think there's a lot of good conversation yeah. here tonight. I want to yeah. thank everybody who, who came, yes. participated, listened. I love that you all love the Kank. It, it, I, I think, we, you know, we all do. We're all here because we love it. He hates kids and candy. But... That's her point of view. Um, I would like to leave the meeting. I'm for setting up a committee, a, a meeting with the um, Board of Selectmen in Woodstock, forming a committee, recommending that to the to the joint board. Um, there's there's uh, lots of things that that committee could do, both future looking for, for uh, you know, building needs, expansion needs, um, current looking for, you know, operational changes, staffing, et cetera. Um, what I think we should leave this meeting with is, is we're going to go meet with the um, joint board whenever we whenever as they're as available, can, yeah um to talk about this further um you know i i think we've we've put the third table back into the building mm -hmm. and i think that was what it was pre-covid right was it three had four before that well, okay if we want to put yeah. one more back i don't again i don't want to make one one if there's room for another table let's do that um can we look into before we even meet with Woodstock, can we look into what it would cost to, to uh, uh, expand the, the um, camera system? What some 
you know, cameras or a new system, whatever, whatever we need. If, if we can just have that ready to talk with them about. Um, if there's people have some comfy chairs that can be donated and carried in there and set up somewhere. Let me just clarify the two comfy chairs, <clears throat> excuse me, are upstairs and those can be moved back. So down. we can We're just, just do thinking that. more for floor space. Okay, for then then let, let's move ahead with that. And um I'm not sure we can change the hours for this season and if if and there's, work everything if out there's something that could be worked out, you know, I think you know the decision was made to trade the Friday night for the one hour on Sunday. To me, that seems like a good trade. Yeah. If it isn't, it doesn't work out. If there's other ways we could manage it, I'd be for that. But that'd be a good thing for the committee to look at setting up um, next season. What are the hours? When does the race team use it? When does the public use it? Um, and um, and then as far as the candy counter, I mean, you've heard two diverse opinions up here. I, I don't want to micromanage, but but you know, maybe you would try it for one Saturday or two sat. I don't know, but but do what happens there. Don't take out the candy for the try, kids. Try to come on. Try to look at the big, big picture. So uh, with with that, I hope that you have faith that number one, this team up here, although we don't agree on the details, we agree on the vision yeah. of of what it what it needs, and we'll work towards getting that. Um, Jim, you want to say something? Yeah. And stuff. Getting furniture or something from yard sales and everything. All these condo developments, I know dear for sure, changes their furniture. Oh, I don't, I don't I doubt two, it. I yeah. have two couches in my cellar. That come from it's just traditionally in all the years that I remember, it was get rid of the old stuff when you got some new donated for the yard sale. It was just. I pick up our kids. It. That's the only reason they're running. Yeah. Thank you. I'll call you, Jim. Oh, that's all. I mean, well, Vicki said, I can go on Facebook and you can, we could have all this furniture. I don't doubt it. We can have rooms full donated. It's the kank. I mean, we'll give my gift out of it. It's and not about how go. to get those. I mean, right. it's yeah. just that traditionally that's how it was done. So that's where my mind goes. There's all kinds of that available. Jane? I, I, just, I, I, had, um, I had a way different vision for this committee. <laughs> I had more of the. Uh, that we kind of had before we didn't have any of you guys or any of Woodstock selecting it was sort of a, a group of uh maybe some either somebody that Tara would think would be appropriate for summer usage of the facility parents somebody is really involved and knows what goes on there some with the skiing uh, Aaron, who, whoever, a, a diverse first group. So we're not asking, geez, to try to get you guys that are already too busy. We get together, not me, but they, it's a younger group, and discuss it and talk and really mull it over. Not, not so formal. Then come to you guys with, hey, this is what we have. And maybe if you want to go to Terra first as a buffer and then do it to a copy, you guys a copy, have them come versus some sort of big formal, like a budget committee or something. Let's talk about what's, because everybody's got a lot of ideas and you know how those meetings are going to be. It's it's going to be. It's going to be I, like this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I'm much more informal. Thank you, back. Excuse me, are you volunteering for the committee? She just said she said that. No. We just appointed you to it. So <laughs> you don't have to volunteer. I think that I would be perfect for it as the historian, but I have absolutely no memory, and I think everybody can answer yeah. that. <laughs> so these bits and pieces flash back and forth. But. I think there's pros and cons of that. I think that I understand what you're saying, but I also think that, first of all, we have two selectmen who are very involved in the Kent Rec area. One in the Lincoln board and one in, in on the Woodstock board. Who I think would be an asset to that committee can add, add some context to the town's perspective versus the I, the, the users. Perspective. I agree, but I'm not going to mention any names either. But some have very strong opinions and very, you know, have this vision. I think. <laughs> Not and, no, I don't, that's 
But when you add two together, they usually that each other. Like, the French, these guys that are all blah, 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 saying they're going to do these things and, and, and see what, and then come back. And then if you want to do something formal, this is more of an idea thing is what I was thinking, as opposed to, yeah, think tank type of thing. Versus, and then if it's, if you think, yeah, that's it. So I don't know. However you want to do it, I right. think it's we're going to talk to the Woodstock board yeah. and see what. Yeah, absolutely. What, what I, comes just, I do think, though, I I disagree a little bit in that I think having yeah, that's not unusual. Like the, that's that's like, like, <laughs> I just read a little bit. Well, the a little bit is unusual. <laughs> but I do think it would be helpful to have stakeholders on there that actually have some agency to make change there, because the thing is. Right. You know, we have a rec director who has a million things she's doing, a million programs she's doing, and a lot of stuff she's trying to balance, and maybe not the bandwidth to think about or reduce. If people want an expansion, that's a big ask for somebody who already has a ton of stuff on their plate. And so having a, a group that could get together and work in a cooperative way with the, with the selectmen and also with the rec department and actually get some of those those things addressed and some of those things done and do some of the heavy lifting on it might be helpful. Jane, would you represent right. the pickleball players on that? We don't do that at the end. All right. <laughs> we might. Uh, I want to thank people for coming. And I think the next step is to is to uh, let the rec director yeah. take a lot of this information and, and move forward with it. And for us to meet with the Woodstock board and we'll move forward with it. Right. Thank um, thank so you. thank you all for coming. Nicole, I know you walked in late. Um, before this all started, we talked about the um, skate park. the skate park. Yes. Last two minutes it was we. Yeah, the, I love it. Okay, that was already talked. Perfect. 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 I am totally game. Thank you. Good. Just wanted to make sure you knew about the two I meetings. Is this the candy? Is this the Okay. First of all, my kids live and breathe the cane. So I'm right. whatever. Yeah. My kids are also now old enough where they can all ski on their own. And I'm like confident in them with that. So I am also willing to volunteer anytime to just clean. I actually love done. Cleaning. You do, so, yeah. Wow. Give her a key. I'm not really able to ski as much as I usually do, so I don't mind coming in for half an hour, hour, and I will clean. Thanks to eat all Give her a key. Now, because my kids are also guilty of it. Sometimes, depending on the day, there are 10, 12 kids around that candy counter. And my seven year old is one that's guilty yeah. for it, will come zooming down and they will run into each other at that candy cup. And I just, I witnessed it myself. My I had one in the building. Yeah. That's I why I'm so leery of coming in. Hot because they're all, yeah. yeah. Right? The traffic wins up. Wins up. Yeah. You don't <laughs> want to go to the sky. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you all. We're going to move on to the next one. Yes. good on the rest of the day? Yes. yes. No. <laughs> now, manager's report. Public nah. participation. You've done that already. Thank you for watching. Thank you for loving the gang. Thank you. Glad you too. Thank you. It doesn't have an address here. I know who it is. So, yeah. Sarah, thank you for coming. Thank you. I don't want to keep my mouth shut. Thank <laughs> you.
Kara, Kara, don't give up too many Saturdays. Oh, Kara, yeah, I work there. I need you to make my lunch. I don't you make my lunch. lunch, and then I go to the camp. Oh, all lunch. right. Sorry, I won't let you go without lunch. All right, thank you. Hey, Kara, you're awesome. Yeah, you are. Kara, right. thank you for your, your perspective. Thank you. Yeah, so it's going to be 11 to 8. Uh, but, uh, yeah. All right, we're going to call the meeting back to order here. Um, town manager reporting. Are you ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. Follow up with that excitement, huh? <laughs> I don't have a formal Tom Andrews report today. I apologize for that. We've been kind of in with the um, budget season, but I do have a couple of things that I would like to show over. Um, okay, uh, so uh, Thursday, February 9th at 9 o'clock a.m., we have a meeting with the Forest Service and Weston Sampson to discuss the South Peak water tank project. Um, so um, I think, OJ, you were cc'd on the email. Uh, if all the board... Yeah. Good. Okay. okay. I, just let me know if there's going to be more than one here so I can I know, notice I, it. OJ okay. can handle it as far as I'm concerned. Oh, if I, let me check my schedule. Okay. okay. Check. Just let me right know. Right just so I can notice. Yes. yes. Here. Actually, no. Right now, they're proposing it at the at White the Mountain County. Forest Service. Oh, actually, 27? Yeah. Okay. Let me yeah. check my schedule. Check the schedule. Just let me know. And if there's two here, I'll post it as a meeting. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I will say, uh, touching base on that a little bit more, um, Sam, uh, Kenny put together a very uh, well written email. Yeah. Did you see that? Yes. Good. Um, in regards to kind of our need for this to be uh, expedited and what we have um, that's time sensitive in regards to Excellent. the Northern Borders grant and then the private developer and whatnot. So this is really kind of lit a fire under the forest uh, service. And so we're hoping that we can all sit down and get a lot of their questions resolved and at least have some sort of confirmation that uh, what we can and can't move forward with. So excellent. Uh, that is Thursday, February 9th. Um, and then uh, just so you all know too, Tara and I are meeting with the, um, we have a Teams Zoom meeting uh, tomorrow with the Department of Cultural and Natural Resources in regards to the grant we received for Riverfront Park and the potential of using those funds for the skate park or some sort of improvements at the community building rather than having to give up um, essentially that $200,000. Okay. Um, so we're meeting with uh, them at 11 a.m. tomorrow. I will say that the outlook is not, um, not I don't wanna say it's not positive, but he kind of, he was very, clear and direct that um, the grant, one of the main criteria for the grant was the river, access. the river access and moving it to a landlocked parcel in the middle of town right. is essentially, you know, eliminating that. So, um, but we're going to talk about ways that potentially we could repurpose the funds if possible. What if we could see, I don't know if it can be on two parcels, but what if we could use some of those funds to make improvements to the um, old hole access 
that we've gained legal access for, but you can't walk on it. Okay. Um, Good, that is. okay. Good. You know, we could use that money to either create the trail across our easement down to the to the old hole, or um, if negotiation with the landowner to re loop the um, the access, the access in, in, included some monetary portion that we could use the grant for that. I, I will say that I think that's a great idea. Um, one of the major concerns, uh, the gentleman, I think his name is Bill, from uh, the department, um, the State Department, said that we will not be granted an additional extension. We have nice. exhausted all of our extensions. Okay, so when, when is it? September of this year. So we would have to do something. If we got the okay to repurpose the funds for a different project scope, we would have to spend those funds this summer or early this fall. I think it's September 23rd or something um, to be able to have that. We'd be, really have to get we'll, on it. We'd really if, have to get if, on it. It'd have to be a this summer it. project. If yeah. they allow it, we'll, we'll get it start done. on that really next month. I mean, right. We could start cutting trees yeah. and oh, yeah. getting ready. And, and the, we could send on that start um, with the land owner's permission. We'd have to work with the landowner on access. Yeah. If so, we're going to change access, we'd need to do that right away. Yeah. But yeah. if we're going to do it on the trail or the, the right of way that we have, there is no trail. Right. On the, on the steep slope that we can legally cross, um, we would need to do that this this summer. Right. And I bet we could find someone to do that. Okay. All right. No, I think that's a great yeah, idea. You have a new candy with it. We could. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Perfect. Okay. Um, I also have uh, good news that the um, labor agreement, the collective bargaining agreement uh, between the town and the collecting bargaining agreement for the police department. Uh, today, we came to a formal agreement and the selectmen will just need to ratify that agreement. You all have copies of the proposed changes in your packets. Um, I didn't know if you had any questions, if we wanted to go into um, non-public, if you thought that was appropriate to discuss the specifics. But um, ideally, the union would like to vote on this on Wednesday. Um, and if the Board of Selectmen would vote to ratify the agreement this evening, and then the Budget Committee could present it on Thursday, and it would be clean, essentially, as um, far as... Where is it? Um, yeah. Is it just one there? copy? No, everyone has their... Look under your blue folder. Is that, it's tucked under a blue folder, I think. Right there. Yeah. Um, I'd like to go into non-public and then when we come out of the non-public, we can- I think that's appropriate that if you have any specifics, yeah. just while they're kind of in limbo sure. as far as formally uh, approving them. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then also in your packets, just so you know as well, is a updated 2023 estimated revenues. You are going to see that our revenues are slightly down in comparison to our 2022 estimated budget and also our 2022 actuals. The reason for that um, really consists of two things. This year and last year, we received ARPA funds, roughly 90 something thousand dollars in ARPA funds that we will no longer receive in 2023. That was a two year deal that's over and done with. So we that's 100 grand right there or 92 and change. Um, we also this year received a one time uh, payment from the state in regards to bridge aid. That was one hundred and twenty two thousand right. dollars. That will not happen again in twenty twenty three as well. So if you look at those two together, that's you know two hundred and ten essentially thousand dollars, which accounts for the difference, the difference. in revenue. Sure. Um, we do expect to obviously receive some grant revenue, but we don't want to put that in our estimated revenues because it's unanticipated right. and we don't really know what right. that amount would be. It would just be a, a shot in the dark at this point. So that, makes sense. Um, that is pretty much the biggest discrepancy between the two. Um, also in your packets, you'll see I have um, updated budget totals. Mm -hmm. The um, uh, Budget Committee is having their public budget hearing on Thursday. There are um, right now five departments in which what the Board of Selectmen recommend and what the Budget Committee recommend differs slightly. And I didn't know if the board wanted to go through them this evening. But the Budget Committee hasn't taken their final vote and we'll do that till tomorrow. So uh, I would correct. be hesitant to do it 
it ahead of their making their final decision. Okay. Do we want, but we want to be able to. What time are we scheduled for the bond hearing on Thursday? 5.30, I believe. So why don't we meet at five and then we can ratify the budget, you know, change or not or sure. whatever, make our recommendation formally on the budget prior to the bond hearing. How do you feel about that, Jack and OJ? I just don't want to do it ahead of the budget hearing because I'm not confident it's not going to change again. Sure. I think I would go the other way. I would, I think the the changes are pretty minor and several of them right. are reductions. Right. If we voted for them now, I think the chances of them changing them further are slight. But if they do, then we can we can vote on Friday and it might just be one budget rather than right. Sorry. I think where you're going to see the most changes Sorry. potentially is in the uh, special warrant article. Yes. I think that's where you're going to see, uh, if, okay. if you're going to see the majority of the changes, I think that's where you're going to see them. Okay. Um, I think, I, I tend to agree with OJ, like if you look at an executive, it's a $3,000 difference. It's right. because we took out some money for electricity mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. And it was a, electricity, we made some changes, and reductions, and insurance deductible. We took insurance, we three budgets. We to took it out of one. I remember exactly. That. Yeah. So, so uh, those aren't controversial in the Okay. Nope. I, I get it. I'm good with that. Okay. The only one that may be controversial is we did. So this is, um, this will be new to you um, all as well. At the last meeting, I told you that we received an updated contract from H2O Innovation. Oh, yeah. So I added that figure into the operating budget. So that brings the, the sewer disposal budget up to reflect the new contract. Right. So that is one that is a, 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 a an increase, an increase. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the budget committee hasn't seen that yet. I have that for them to look um, before they vote on uh, tomorrow. But all the other changes are relatively minor. So the new operating totals. And then there is the trust. I, okay, I gotcha. Yeah. I highlighted all the ones that are the differentiate. Yeah. Right. We just need to vote on the total, correct? Not each individually, do we? The what? We don't need um, to vote individually, just on the total. For the clarity of a of what we're doing, I would put it in the motion. At least point out which budgets well, we're we're percent. adjusting, and then do the total. Okay. The proposal is to reduce, in the executive, we're changing the appraisal maintenance down to 35 because of it. it, it we just had the reval. So right, last year right, we budgeted yeah. a lot. We reduced yeah. it and we're reducing it more based on updated projections. Correct. Um, we're adding $2,000 for the surfaces. For the budget. the budget committee wants one laptop. Uh, yep. Okay. So they uh, put $2,000 into the, that line item. Yep. So that creates your difference in the executive line. Gotcha. And the town car maintenance. Oh, we took we took $1,000 out of that. Right. Um, electricity, we took $2,000. Oh, I'm sorry, that's town hall. Yeah. All right. So those are the three three changes on the executive. executive. Correct. Town yeah. hall, we reduced electricity by 2000 Insurance, we put all the deductibles in there. Um, at 2000. At 2000. Oh, yeah. right. The vehicle deductible. Yep. Yeah. The insurance. Right. The, that, was, that was insurance. The sewage, we added in the H2O um, contract rate of 221.5. Is that the correct rate? Uh, no, 251. 251 is the correct rate. The budget committee has yet to vote on the increase because we just received right. it. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. So that's, like I said, I have them to vote on that tomorrow. Okay, so we're gonna recommend 251. Correct. And then in water treatment, we went electricity, we had put it 165 based on most recent numbers, 150 is gonna be enough. Correct. Those are the changes. So we wanna make a motion to amend our recommended budget. To reflect, the, I, I'll make that motion to reflect the budget committee's Proposed budget is seven million seven hundred fifty-four thousand six hundred forty-three dollars for the operating total, and the reserve trust articles at one million two hundred twenty-two thousand dollars. 
for a total of $8,976,643, correct? The only thing you missed yes. is the um, sewage disposal line that made our balance oh, oh, oh. at the 7,809,143, not the 7,754,643. Oh, I'm reading the wrong one, sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So let me redo that. The operating total budget at $7,809,143. The reserve trust um, articles at $1,222,000 for a total of $9,031,143. Thank you. I'll second that. That's up a 2.14% increase over last year's budget. Correct. For the operating totals and the reserves and trusts. Yes, yep. the special warrant articles based on how we have multiple options for different things, it's hard to kind of right. put a figure or an right. increase on it because if one passes, then the other one we're not going to vote on right. and vice right. versa. So I didn't want to plug a number in there because it was going to throw all the calculations off. Right. So I just left it blank for yeah. now. I get that. Okay. Okay, so you've seconded that? Yes, I did. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And if the budget committee makes any other changes, we before the meeting, um, before the bond hearing, if we have to. Yep. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Karina, thank you for doing all these. It's it's helped yes. us to have that the highlighting and all the highlighting material. And, yeah. No thank worries. You. It helps me as well. <laughs> um, and that's all I have, like I said, other than the CBA agreement. All right. A couple of things. Um, first of all, we um, you and I talked this weekend about and with Chad about um, traffic in town. Yes. And we were going to look at getting a meeting with Loon Mountain. Correct. Have they agreed to a finalized date? I think Friday right now is the tentative date, but um, Phil Bolio from DOT weighed in today. So we're checking his availability so we can have a representative from oh, DOT? DOT available as well. So um, when that gets finalized in the next day or so, I'll make sure to let you all know. Okay. And I've been what, with, with, uh, talked to Phil, texted back and forth with Phil. Now talk to, I talked with Chief today about the uh, public safety. Phil gave me a name there that the Chief had to call directly again, just to um, possibly get a loan on the digital sign of gas fouling that, um, that we can use like we did in the past for uh, the uh, big weekends at home, you know, which is becoming every weekend, not only February vacation. So yeah, I think we included in that meeting. Okay, so when you confirm a time with everyone, um, let the whole- I'll let everyone know, know. right. Yeah. And post the meeting as a, a public meeting mm -hmm. with no public input. Okay. That I can do. All right. And then the other thing is any update with Granicus? Uh, I am now getting daily updates from Granicus and they consist of, we're still working on it. Um, so I've held back uh, the payment of the final invoice. Um, I told them that we are not moving forward with the, the fourth quarter payment until we have one, the website up and running at the, at the very least. And also we have been hovering at the 65% mark for data collection and compliance monitoring, which we are not gonna, gonna pay for the fourth quarter unless that is at 100%, because right. if we don't have a fully functioning website with fully functioning post-compliance, you know, data and figures, then we're not paying for the, the final quarter. Um, I've been told, I know it's same, stuff different day, um, but that they have all of their heads of their departments working. The issue that they're having right now is some payments are going through. 97% of the payments are not, but 3% are. We've received 12 in January. So why are some going through and not others? And that's what they're trying to identify. I'm not a techie, but They've done this a hundred thousands and, of times, right? In so many right. other communities. The program, I mean, yeah. Uh, I just don't. I don't get it. Um, I don't either. If if it helps them to watch, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to try to register mine for like the twentieth time. Mm -hmm. um, if they, you know, I know that 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 they can. You know, watch what's happening on a sure. computer transaction. 
I'm happy to play the guinea pig if they right. really need it. Well, we've started compiling a list of everyone that's called that has said, I can't do it. And we've been forwarding them their name, their address, their registration number, so they can see this exact person, at, you know, and they can go okay. in on the back end and say, why? Why? Right. So um, we've sent them, you know, half a dozen last week, I think, or no, half a dozen the week before we sent them another half a dozen last week. So they have, you know, actual names and registration numbers of the units that can't seem to process. Not again, to try to solve their problems. It would be interesting to know whether their problem is on the registration side or on the payment side. Now, it's definitely on the payment side oh, because we can process a check only registration. Oh, okay. So that's what, unfortunately, we've We've been pushing people off, don't give us a check, don't give us a check, don't give us a check. But because of this has been happening now for a month, right. um, we've started to take the checks for people because we just don't want to keep on turning the money away. Right. So we can go in and process a registration as long as we're not selecting a credit card or an ACH and that registration goes through. So it's definitely, it's definitely on, the payment, on the payment side of things. And because they're using a third party, Stripe, they're working with Stripe to try to, I think, identify if it's a Brannicus problem or a Stripe problem or both of them problems. Yeah, not it's not impressive. No, it, it, and it makes makes us look right foolish as a town mm -hmm. that they sent out those notices even when they were told not to, mm -hmm. knowing that all these people that are getting the notices can't. Register. Well, ask Jane how many phone calls she's gotten I, in the last week. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's I, I was disgusted when I got that email. It's like because I knew that it wasn't fixed. Mm -hmm. And then I see the email. I said, I hope they're just testing that on me. No. no. And that wasn't the case. They sent it to everybody. No, no there's definitely um gonna have to be a long discussion if we if they if they do end up getting this website up, up and running within the week. Um, you know, our, our term with them ends in April. There's going to have to be a, a much broader discussion on whether this is um, something we continue with. Yeah, definitely don't make any more payments. No. And um, what about except, I mean, we're at the end of January. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what would you think about taking, I know the whole reason for this was to take the office uh, burden off the office. Mm -hmm. Not now. If we don't take checks, we're not going to get paid. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to start encouraging people to bring checks in, mail checks in? We've discussed this in house, and I think we are right now. We are in the mindset of let's wait and see because. Even if we send out the renewal notices in February or March, not that we want to wait that long, yeah. we'll still capture everyone and more people than what we currently have registered. Correct. So yeah. whether the revenue comes in in January or it comes in in March or it comes in in July, hopefully we will still recoup all that revenue and have it be a 2023, you know, right revenue line item whether it comes in in january or comes in in july not that we want it to go that far at all but um we hope that no matter what when this is up and operating the way it will be it won't take us that long to recoup things because once those notices that come out the money should start flowing in i mean that's why i think we're getting all these phone calls all of a sudden because people want to pay because they got the email right all right we're going to meet twice in February. Correct. At the second February meeting, can we give them that date as a date that this board is going to make a decision on what to do? Sure. I mean, if they haven't got their payment right. things fixed in a month, uh, in another month, they've already had a month and a half. So you're talking the February 13th meeting? No, the second one. 27. 27. That one. Okay. Um, Deadline, if it's not operable. Yeah. That's I mean, when we're going to make the decision. Yeah. That'll be that'll be three months because it was a, it was in December. So they've had all of December, mm -hmm. January, yes. by that time, all of February to fix a payment. They were they were notified one week from last Friday. Exactly one, I mean one month, excuse me. They were notified of the issue on December 27th of 
last year. Yeah. Okay. I looked at your emails. Is that when it yeah. came? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was before. But yeah. yeah. But all right. Yeah. So. Um, all right. I, I don't disagree. I'm in agreement wholeheartedly. All right. That sounds. I don't say good. It sounds like a plan. <laughs> the plan. That was all I had. Jack, do you have anything? Yes, um, I attended, and I think Karina has uh, sent to you, scanned this document uh, from the Country Council. I don't know if I, did I send it? I know I scanned everything, and I thought I had sent it, but maybe my brain. I don't think it. I got it. But I have it all electronically for okay. you. Okay. All right, it's only 60 pages, so it's I didn't want to copy it off. Um, yeah, I get it. Okay. But um, I went to the meeting, and the big issue was um, affordable workforce housing and I think something that this town needs also as we know and we don't have a seat at the table even though we pay dues so if neither of you two or Karina want to attend their meetings I'd be willing to serve as our board our town's representative on that but uh, there's a formal process for doing that it has to go through the planning board has, has to nominate them has to nominate me um, once Karina would throw my name before them and then you have to approve it. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Let's um bring that up the next planning board meeting and get him on mm -hmm. it. nominated so then we can yeah. approve it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. It was interesting. A lot of good people there. And and that reminds me the Pemi River Local Advisory Committee meeting is tomorrow night. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm happy to go unless someone else wants to have a good time. You're doing a great job. Uh, yeah. Fine, fine going. Jane? Did I put the paper in there? Yes, I got it. Did I you got see it. the location has changed? Yeah, I'm what? probably going to join by Zoom. Oh, all right. <laughs> I just my I location has changed. Yeah, food but thank you. Have a food and drink tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, it's, the, it's at I the think so. man of food, oh, man food, man food and drink. Oh, wait, maybe yeah. I'll look. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be here. we got budget tomorrow. Oh, right. Yeah. No, thanks. Did you have anything? Um, I, mine was covered. I'm good. Just the candy counter? Yes. OJ hates children and candy. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, then I'll open up for public participation. If there's any. Miles. Miles. I have a cow candy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sell ice cream too? No, no. I yeah. have to bring up mobile ice cream. There you go. That'll keep me going. Um, I'm here tonight to talk to you folks about uh, many years ago, and people know, Lou Anne Lane, okay, comes from Pollard Road, and it continues down to Main Street. The town owns the land, they always have. In 1980, when I owned the deli and everything up here, and I lived at Bijou's house, the old moon house, I would go up there, stop at the Legion to socialize on my way home, and then I'd go up that path and go to the house. And that path is always there and it's been there. That's all been grown in now. And I've talked to Karen Martell and I've spoken with the La Montagnes and some of the other neighbors. And what we're going to ask you, or I'm here to ask you to do, is to reestablish that walking path, just like the walking path that goes down O'Brien Avenue goes past Roger's house, and then they put up those two yellow stanchions so you can't get a car through it. And then it's paved all the way through. And that would allow access for all the people in the Paul Road area to come down. They can come down and go through O'Brien Avenue, and now they can be able to come through to Main Street. And that was always there. And uh, I was thinking about this because Tom Trumbly has put in the, the seven house lots now, and all the access that used to go through my property, that was a deeded access, he gave, he gave up. And there's now two fences there. So there's no going to be no pedestrian getting through, because when people want to go to town, they want to go the most direct way. Right. Nobody wants to go that way to go this way. Right. But they're going to have to. And that path has always been there. It's a town path. I'm sure at one time people probably drove cars, right, all the way through. But you can't do it because at the Pollard Road end of it, it's about 16 feet wide. And when it gets down to Main Street, it's only about 11 feet wide. And there's a curb cut 
on Main Street between Tom Tremblay's driveway and the next driveway up, which was Meg Hassey's yeah, 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 interior okay, okay. decorator. Yep. And that is that if you look on any of our town maps, that goes right through there. I'm looking at it right now. You see, and I know where it is. I believe that it would be in the best interest of the towns, the townspeople. And I asked Karen Martell because, I mean, that goes back to Sherman Adams and all that, and That's the La Montagnes, and you're going to have houses all built in there. But that tap be opened up. And what I did is, before I came to you folks, I knew this would fall on the shoulders of Mr. Hadway, and Nate Hadway yeah, from the yeah. public department. So I went over there one day about lunchtime, and I caught he and a couple of the guys there that have been members of the town. And I talked about it, and they said, yeah, Miles, we know the path. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And they're all for it, because it's going to be a lot of labor work. you got to cut it. I would think the only real expense to the town would be paving it. And Nate said, yeah, it's got to be paved if you want me to snow blow it with this tractor. And he said the same thing. And we put the yellow stanchions, I'll call them, you yep, know, so yep. no one can drive through. And you'll be able to see, because you used to be able to see all the way through sure. there. And it would be a good open pathway. You can take a bicycle, footpath, carriage, anything through there other than a, a motorized vehicle. Okay, so I don't see it as a big expense to the town other than the labor. And I've talked to the guys, and Nate said he had no problem snow blowing it, other than he wanted to make sure that there's no confusion that he's not snow blowing any of Luann Lane, I guess, just this that little path, pathway. Because, sure. yeah. you know, I want to make sure that he could say, yeah, I can maintain it. We have no problem doing the labor with it. Of course, there's going to be some expense to the town. There always is, but I think it's menial. And I came here to get it on the to-do list type of thing, because that's, I think, it's a decision you guys can make. You don't have to have a public meeting on it. Uh, now, there's only one other thing I would like to mention the possibility of, and I didn't mention this to Nate, but these days, and I'm not talking solar lighting like we have to have for blinking lights and cost $10,000, but... I think in there you could put a couple of pole lights and then just run a solar collector over to Main Street. Very simple. And that way they'd be, because that is about 200 feet. And even the little path from the end of Rogers down to, I mean, that's dark too at night. I walk it all the time. There used to be a light on the building I owned that was on a, a light, a, a, a blinker that would come on. Yeah. I think it's out again. But, you know, I think for short money, the town could put a couple of lights in there and then just a little solar panel over to the side and that would do it. You know, if you get a cloudy day, you don't have the lights on. But, you know, it's just one of those things. It's just that, you know, we talk about the village center and how it should be accessible to people. And that path has always been there. I, in the 80s, I used it all the time. And then it's just overgrown over the years and nobody's done anything to it. So that's what my, my reasoning was for coming tonight. So if that's something that the town could see through about putting it onto the budget and working it through uh, to the public works department, I think they're they're more than willing to accept it too. You know, that's not a problem with them. Yeah, Nate's pretty awesome like that. He's, no, they're good with that stuff. Yeah. I mean, of course, you know, Dave Bowden's sitting there and um, uh, the other guy there, and they're all like, yeah, I remember, I remember. You know, they're it's just, yeah. it gets grown over. People forget about it. But now there's going to be a lot more people going up and down the Wayne Lane. And uh, it would be good to have some more access out to Main Street, and it's there. So, Thank you so. for bringing it to us. You're a patient man to sit there for two hours. I know. I just spent a ten hour shift at work <laughs> right, right, right here. <laughs> you too, Jenny. He said, and one more thing, I didn't talk to Nate about. I was waiting for him to say, "Can you put up a candy cap?" <laughs> <laughs> I was going to move the question. But, yeah. you, know, that was rude, but, you know. Yeah. I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah. I think that's I'm all for it. I'm all for it. And, yeah. and you're right. It's that's cheap money. I don't think we need to make any changes in the budget. I mean, is yeah, coordinate with Nate some, when he's doing another job or something. Yeah, yeah. Like first year, we might not have electricity. You know, that might yeah, take a little labor thing, thing. But there yeah. is some pavement involved. So when you're doing your big paving thing, and also the thing, who's going to have to measure the the little thing? Well, I, I do think Nate has some big paving projects this summer. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, that so, he can roll well, that in yeah. be on that list. Yeah, and I think he's got some of the uh, 
the um still is that all completed some of the back streets i think he has on his mm -hmm. list yeah. 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 something that's wondering because some of them are anyway i think that's a small thing. amount yeah. of pavement oh, yeah. even if it's still still the road it's three and a half feet yeah. wide to 150 feet yeah it's not that much well, so we'll, probably, we'll have to make it ada compliant so we'll have to make sure that it's wide enough wide enough for a wheelchair right, right. yeah yeah uh, but i still well, i think it's short right now it probably is i imagine you know that was done a few years earlier so maybe that wasn't really it's wide enough you can get a wheelchair through there and stuff but yeah they may not be able to get a car. Church school in East Burr, hopefully. Deb, did you have a question? And oh, Luann Lane. I was just pointing something out to him. So oh, Luann Lane. Yeah. All right. Last question. <laughs> yes. Paving projects. What about that dead end road where Debbie lives on? At the very end of it, they can't, he has to raise his plow. That hole is so deep and the, the asphalt's gone. It's all broken up. Oh. Pollard Road is on for 2027. No, four more years. But I mean, if it needs to be addressed prior to that, we'll certainly address it prior to that. Can you put that on Nate's radar? Sure. There? In not obviously not now, but in the spring to see what he can. This year they you know, they have to raise the plow. All that. This year it's interesting. Luann Lane overlay is on the CIP this year. So that might be a perfect time to. If they're going to overlay Lou and Lane, they can just keep going right yeah, now. That, yeah, right. yeah, good timing. So <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, they've also got um, East Burr, School Street, and Church Street on it. Yeah, so there's going to be paving done. Yeah. No, it's great. I just, it's, yeah. well, no. it's a little thing. It'd be, it'd be a big, a lot of people. I think they'd like yeah, it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other good jump? East Burr is going to be paved. But it says oh, overlay. Like overlay on east. Where was that? Don't forget, that's just for budgeting purposes, though. It's not right. necessarily. Now, he had a couple projects last year that he put off because the asphalt prices were right. yeah. they were ridiculous. And so they. And he put a couple of them off. So, it, you know, the, the, his schedule might have been tweaked a little on that. I was told to Canadian about it. Yeah. Water line is on the other side of the street from my house. Mm -hmm. It's already broke once because I had Rex come fix it. Line, my water line to the my original house mm -hmm. is a galvanized line under Paula Road. I mean under East, East, East Spur, East yep. Spur. Or they pave anything. I would almost think you'd want to fix that galvanized water line. Mm -hmm. And there's some too that if you know he looks at East Fur and it doesn't need it, he's not going to do right, it. Right, right. With any of those roads, if he, right. even if it's on the schedule, he's he's not one to do it just to do it. If it doesn't need doing, he won't do it. Well, he doesn't waste money okay. at all. That's going to have to be done anyway. Sure. You sell them some land mm -hmm. where that old barn used to be and everything. Oh, sure. So that three quarter inch water line is not going to be enough for three houses. Right. That's going to have to go to probably a one or one quarter. Maybe you could bring that to Nate's attention and as well. Sewer line is only four inch under there. That'll have to go to a piece of six. If, so but if someone's buying that done. land and sub right. is it subdividing it, Jim? No. The land? No. Yeah. Yes. So you, I thought it was already divided. Is it your old house, your the house you live in now, in the barn of three different parcels? No. Oh. Uh, no, it's where my the, mistake. It's where my salt shed is. Yeah. The rest of it's. Oh, yeah, so that would be so on the developer that will do that. Yeah, yeah. Two yeah. more yeah. house lots where the old barn used to be in Miami. So when you do the subdivision, that's going to be part of your responsibility that you were the purchaser, not the town. To upgrade, the to upgrade to upgrade the septic and the water. So right. put that in your negotiations with your buyer I so that they do it. Have to rip it right. off. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Makes sense over there. Yeah, absolutely. I'll talk to Nate. All right, excellent. So you're talking Nate about Luann Lane extension and any spur yeah. water line. Yeah. All right. Any other public discussion? Excellent. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, OJ, could you give me the date and time on that DOT meeting again? We don't have a date. We it's, it's tentatively set for Friday. We don't have a time yet. I know there's no public, but 
Are you going to Zoom that, or is that going to be attended in person? It's person. going to be in person with no public comment. And that will be where? Again, we haven't figured out all the details, but I imagine it will be here just because that's where we've held the last two. How do I find that out? Can I? Can you let well, me know, Karina? Yeah, I'll shoot you an email or something. All right, thank you. Yep, yep. That's all. You can ask my question. All right. If there's nothing else, um, we want to go to non-public to discuss the union contract. The union contract. And was there one other personnel issue to yes. Yes. correct? Update us on. Update you on. Correct. Awesome. Roger, thank you. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. Motion to go into non public. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I want to be able to see that. I did. I told you. All right. Okay. I'm calling the meeting, public meeting, back to order. Um, we have reached, uh, the town has reached a verbal agreement at this point with the um, with the Teamsters Union for the police. Um, I'll make a motion that we accept the written contract as proposed. I will second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the police we, will, we will await the yes. um, signature by the police union, which we anticipate them signing this, but Wednesday. Um, yeah. But we will wait and and um so this will be ready for release once they have signed it and we have a final fully signed version of it. Right. And so their plan is on Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. They are not having a, a specific time and date which they're meeting because they're trying to capture as many people as they can as they're coming in and sure. off yes. to vote in the ballot box. So we probably won't have a, a true ratification on their end till late Wednesday evening or maybe either early Thursday, but hopefully by the end of this week, it should be all said and done. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this will be made public when it's fully signed correct whenever that is all right anything else no motion i'll make a motion we to adjourn at 7 56 p.m second all, second all those in favor aye, aye. thank you we got a motion to adjourn oh we did that was it oh. that was the motion, to motion to adjourn oh i got a second <laughs> we all agreed so we're good all right. I mean, you can say if you want, but no, okay. All right. I'm throwing this pen away. <laughs> <laughs>